Hey everybody, long time no see. We're back with the Guild 2 Renaissance with the Rogue Guide. If you want to see the Craftsman Guide or the Scholar Guide, I'll have them both linked in the description as well as a good intro to any team. And I'll be doing the Patron Guide tomorrow, so I'll actually have every class up soon. But today we're on with the Rogue Guide. Instead of showing you from the very start how to do this team. The Rogue is a very slow build team with a lot of incredibly unique buildings. So I'm actually going to be loading up a save file I made earlier today where I can really show off every single building in detail. There are going to be a lot of questions about things probably that I'm hopefully going to be able to answer, but if you have any questions I don't answer in the video, let me know in the comments section. Let's get on with the game. All right, we're in the game now. So normally I like to test these things and show th these things off in smaller maps than the Hansa, which is the biggest map in the game. However, the Hansa has a lot of water on it, as you can see, and piratry is actually a big part of the Renaissance for the rogues. So I'm going to be showing that off. You can see we have a lot of buildings on the right here, as there are a lot of buildings for the rogue, and it's a little bit of a slow start. So let's start going down the list one by one in the order that I kind of recommend you start in. I recommend you either start with a Vagabond's Camp or your pub, or Hedge Tavern as it is for us, as is well upgraded. But let's start with a Vagabond's Camp. A Vagabond's Camp is something you build outside of the town, so you might need a little bit of security for it. And it's one of the outdoor-only buildings where you have a variety of abilities with it, as well as products you can make. So we have all kinds of products here we can make. It's mostly things about um, damaging the productivity of other people's businesses through harming the people involved, uh, putting them to sleep, things like that, in kind of indirect ways. You'll have things like the spend all the sleeping beauty, which will make someone fall asleep. Usually you want to do that to someone, as it says here, before the election. Uh, stuff like that. You can also get the Hypnosis Pendulum, leaves them wandering around town for a little while, use it to make them miss court hearings and whatnot. It kind of has the same appeal as the Sleeping Beauty Spindle. And lastly, the Voodoo Doll makes someone suffer a whole bunch of pain. The main thing that we get out of this, though, is it gives our abilities, our people the ability to beg. So, we can go begging, we can tell a fortune, and we can do the Crystal Ball readings. Every time you upgrade the Vagamon camp, you unlock another one of these, you start with just begging. Now, Fortune and Crystal Ball get you a lot more money, especially Crystal Ball, however, you don't get any experience for it, whereas Begging, you tend to get the least money for, however, you get a lot of experience for it. There isn't really much to the Vagamon camp, but it's very low cost, high reward. And it's not particularly dangerous, aside from having to have a business outside, which is kind of unfortunate. You're kind of out in the open to get attacked without necessarily having city guards to help you. I also have the game playing very slowly right now, just to keep me from getting absolutely bombarded with notifications. When you're a rogue, everything is up with a small trickle effect of money. So if you have things at regular speed, all you can hear is constant money noises. Let's just speed it up a little bit. Next, we have the Hedge Tavern, and this is one of those things that people have a lot of questions about. It doesn't uh, exactly explain things as well, so let's just go in here. Also, get used to constant fart sound effects and breaking glass if you uh, like to leave your camera in here. So, it's kind of strange in that it's not quite like the tavern that you would see... Uh, a patron have. You're not actually making products here. Instead, you're hiring uh, prostitutes that you can have either serve in the bar to serve guests, and they'll just kind of generate money for Inviso beer, I guess? It's very confusing. Uh, but as you level up the building level to either the second or third level, you unlock the ability to, if you purchase it here, oop, uh, you can start getting a pirate grog and rum. Also, if people who come and can gamble if they'd like to, you get some commission off that. Every once in a while, you can smuggle alcohol, and you can see the two different prices. Here's the answer to one thing. Let's just do rum. It's worth more money. It instantly teleports into your store, and you'll see it has a base value of one, and you can't sell it on the market. So people sometimes wondering wonder what the point of this is. If you put it in your sales stock, then when people come in here to do drinking games... They'll buy the rum and the pyrogrog, and it'll be worth more than it actually displays. So it is worth more than one gold. It is actually worth getting. Now, you'll notice I got 30 there when I smuggled it, when normally you get 10. Well, the way that works, we'll hit C here for a character sheet. You get 10 for every point of arcane knowledge you have. 
Uh, so they knowledge is cut off a little there if you're wondering if that's a typo. Um, so if we were to have our error key knowledge at 10, then we would smuggle 100 rum or grog every time, and the, the price is full. The price does not go up. So uh, you get a huge return on value if you get your arcane knowledge up just a little bit. You don't really need it above three, but if you really want to, by all means, get ten. Another trick here is if you actually have a person in here, uh, the tavern is a great place to have your main character for the rogues. Because as he serves guests, he gets experience for free very quickly with zero risk. Anything you do in this tavern does not is not considered illegal. There's nothing here that's going to get you taken to court. So you can safely just sit in here serving guests the entire game and you'll have an absolutely ridiculous amount of experience to spend on things. Diplomacy, feud, you're going to make a lot of feuds as rogues. Last thing here, and we're going to speed up the game a little bit, is I would like to hire prostitutes. There are a few things you can do here. We're just going to hire one cheap. What? And you know what? We'll come back to that building once people have woken up, because the next building, people work all night at. We have our Thieves Guild. The warehouse is full. And the warehouse is full. We have the Thieves Guild. Your thieves never go home and sleep at night. They work all night, which instantly means they make a lot of money. What you do is, the first thing you can do is send them around town to pickpockets. So they'll stay in positions like this, and whenever they see a golden opportunity, they're going to try and pick someone's pocket. The money you get off that person will be a percentage based on their dexterity, and I believe their dex- uh, both your person's dexterity and the target's dexterity, to roll for what percent percentage of their family money you steal. So if, say, you steal from a very rich dynasty, then you're potentially going to get a lot of money for one little pickpocketing. Whether or not they succeed is based off their dexterity, that also- uh, determines how much money they get, and whether or not they get caught and have to run away for a little while and hide away in the guild, Thieves' Guild is dependent on their thief's, uh, their stealth skill. So you can see here, this person has a lot of stealth skill and a lot of dexterity, some martial arts training and condition in case they get into a fight, some empathy. Overall, that's a really good thief. I'm really to happy to have that one pickpocketing around town for us. And we can actually uh, see I have my main character pickpocketing, even though it'll probably make people hate me if they catch me. And I could end up going to uh, prison or something for it. But you can see my stealth and dexterity skill is very high, so I'm not overly concerned. So, I actually make a lot of money off that. Uh, other things you can do to Thieves Guild, once you've upgraded at least once, you can kidnap people. Which is a really big one. Uh, it's not popping up here, but I believe... Oh yeah, someone's interacting with them. I'll pick another thief. You. So you can also kidnap people and hold them ransom to the rest of their family. If you manage to catch some really, uh, really high-ranking person, you might make a lot of money off of that. You can also scout a building, where you scout a building for a little bit, and you determine the relative income. You can see them picking a pocket there, and we got 150. It's just some NPC. They weren't very wealthy, but still 150, Your not bad. Sins are forgiven. Apparently my sins were forgiven. I don't know why, but they were. Uh, apparently that's what some city council person was doing with me. I don't know why they decided to do that with me, but that's the decision they came to. So you can scout a building and it'll tell you the relative, uh, ease of breaking into it, how fast you can do it, and how much money and loot you think you'll get from it. And then when you think you want to burglar- burgle the place, you hit commit burglary, and you can set as many of your people on it as you want as a time. The more people you set on it, it won't go any faster. However, it- you will get more out of it. At the end of it, they'll all come out of the place with some money, as well as some of the goods that the place had, and you can store all of that in your Thieves' Guild for safekeeping and sell it whenever you want to. It's a very risky job, uh, having a Thieves' Guild for anything more than simple pickpocketing. Pickpocketing is very safe, stable income. However, uh, it's kind of the most thief-like thief thing for the rogue to do. Uh, it's morning, and look, the prostitutes are What's awake up? now. So, we're gonna have one serving the bar. Always have one serving in your tavern at a time. On the modern update, you can only have one serving there at a time. On old ones, you used to have multiple. Assign thief services. Ooh. Uh, this is actually new. Assign your lady to pickpocket during their service, filling the customers. Yeah, these are actually new. Um, so I'm not as familiar with these. Yeah. Barrel contents, mixed beer mixed with ingredients, strongest sailor. Okay, so poisoning people. 
and also picking pockets, but you never know when you're going to get caught. The main things here for your prostitutes is you can assign salacious, salacious services, which is you tell them to, kind of like pickpocketing, stay in an area and call people over and sleep with them, basically. You'll make a lot of money off of it, although it's a little bit slow, uh, and you do need to manually retell them to do it every morning or else they'll just hang out in one spot around the front of the tavern. It's really annoying, but you can do it. You can also get a little bit of synergy with the prostitutes with distracting city guards. You can actually have them distract guards in different areas to perhaps keep the guards out of your face when you're maybe going to want to kidnap someone or going to uh, break into a building and steal from it. So there's a lot of synergy there. You can see her running around a little bit. She's probably going to go flag someone down. So that's another very stable way of making money. Uh, the prostitutes work at the tavern, so... The tavern is a very, very safe building to get. You're never going to get busted for prostitution. So the tavern is probably the safest in terms of the law uh, for rogue buildings. Next, we have, and just so it stops yelling at me, I'm going to do it early. This is the riskiest one. The Baron's Camp. This is your Waylayer's Camp. You can see a big fight going on outside of here. This is just above Hamburg, between Hamburg and, and um, Burson, I believe it is. And you can see uh, a bunch of my bandits just killed some cart carrier who had a bunch of goods and they're stealing the goods and putting it in our baron's camp. You can see we have all kinds of stuff here. Let's actually purchase a few more ox carts so we can really sell this stuff off. So you can see they have all kinds of goods in here. And this is because every single time people come through here, we have our people set to waylay this road. It's going to make people hate our guts fast. It's going to mean that the richer families are going to be trying to take us to court all the time for our association with these bandits. But look at all the stuff we're stealing. Now, this is directly hurting other people's businesses, so they're really going to have it out for you. But keep in mind, it's hurting other people's businesses and not yours. So all of a sudden, some people are going to want to make mutual assistance pacts with you so you don't rob them. And if you have a family member who can have another business, maybe they're a craftsman, then keep in mind that you're robbing other craftsmen so that your stuff, when you sell your stuff off, they haven't been selling theirs, so it's worth more money. There's less of it on the market. So there are a lot of advantages to having these uh, waylayers camps, but it is very dangerous because you're outwardly killing, you're outwardly robbing. And you're so drastically affecting trade routes from town to town that um, a lot of businesses are really going to put you as a high priority to try and take down. So you can click on one of the random bandits here. They can heal at their baron's camp. You can pick, you can tell them to waylay, where they'll hang out by the side of the road and rob people. You can extort protection money, where you walk up to a building and say, give me some money or I'm robbing you. And if they say no, then your people will immediately try and rob them. And you can do this straight old plunder building, much like a, a thieves guild worker would. Pretty basic, pretty easy to understand. Uh, they tend to be a lot higher in combat skills, not so good at stealth. This is by far the riskiest of the rogue jobs, but the most profitable in general, because you're hurting other people's businesses is the biggest net gain. Thieves guild can also be crazy profitable. So, a much safer version that is also going to make you a lot of enemies, the Mercenaries Fort. So this is a legal version, essentially. We can see we have a few people here, and they are hanging around on the road collecting tolls. This will make everyone going by furious, but you'll extort money and say, hey, we're keeping these roads safe, you better pay us money. But every time you do it, the family going through will like you a little bit less. This is the fastest way in the game, probably, to rack up feuds with people, because they'll be so annoyed at you constantly making them pay a toll. The mercenaries themselves are incredible fighters, so if you ever need a standing army to take care of something, your mercenaries are the best thing you can hire, outside of proper thugs from your house that you arm yourself. But even then, these guys aren't slouches. They might just start with a dagger, but their stats are great. There are a few other things you can do with them. They can heal at their camp, just like a baron's camp robber would. You can collect hush money, where they'll hang around in town, and if they catch someone committing a crime, they'll try and force them uh, by, through blackmail to give them money. 
this one doesn't tend to get you a whole lot because it's really reliant on you catching other people's crimes. It's mostly to combat another rogue syndicate cropping up. If some other rogue is a real up-and-coming power that you want to take care of, that's a good way to take care of them, to just take a little bit of money out of their pockets without directly competing with them. But because they're rogue, they're probably going to have some businesses outside in the roads here, and it might just be a good idea to send your mercenaries to just mass attack them, maybe plunder them with your, uh, with your robber barons. Next, you can offer a building protection. This is a bit like... Um, the extortion racket where you walk up and say, give me money or I'm robbing you. Instead, it's give me money and I'll protect you. And your mercenary will protect their building for, I believe it's about 10 hours in game. If they give you the money, if they say no, there is no consequence. So lower reward, lower risk. Um, but remember, if someone tries to rob their building, well, you've agreed to that. Your mercenary will fight that person. So, not that it happens often, it's mostly just for the money. The last thing is if you have the place fully upgraded, you can, you can do a Razia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this kind of says it all here. If you have a lot of legal evidence against someone, maybe you've been sending thugs around to spy on people, and you have good reason to believe that, uh, or strong evidence of someone's crimes, then you can basically just do a house search on them and the city guards will give you the thumbs up to do it as long as you have the proof. The thing is, uh, they might fight you and like it says here, the city guard, uh, they won't tolerate that. You gotta be well prepared, have enough bodyguards nearby because again, an enormous brawl could break out. You never know what could happen, and it's expensive to replace high-level mercenaries, but luckily they're good fighters. You might even want to go to the store and pick them up some proper armor and weaponry to get them as prepared as possible. That is mostly a tactic you would do to really hamper really strong other dynasties, the really wealthy and rich ones that feel insurmountable. That's a way where as long as you can get evidence of their crimes, why put them in jail for a turn or two and not get much out of it when you could do a full out house search on them and really mess with them? So that's about the extent of the mercenaries. Uh, last thing to cover, I believe the last one is just, yep, last one is just the Pirate Haven. So this is an interesting one. And it's one that you don't really have on all maps. So the Pirate Haven is a one-level building. Uh, it only has one level of it. It's pretty expensive, but it's good. And it doesn't produce anything by itself. You can see there's actually very little it can do either than have a very big cargo hold. It's a little bit like a warehouse in that way. And I do recommend you actually have a cart for it, which I should have. You can build one ship at it. It's not a particularly powerful ship, and it's not a heavily customizable ship. Although you can do this stuff, make it a little bit stronger. I haven't bothered, because I don't really need to. You can camouflage the pirate ship if you want to. It's mostly for if you're being hunted down, which the AI doesn't particularly do. You can plunder other ships, so if you see cargo ships going through, maybe the um, maybe the roads have been really dangerous because you've made a lot of barren camps, and the other opponents are starting to catch wise. They're building warehouses in the docks, and they're trading from market to market by ships through the docks to speed things up, make things safer. Well, you can plunder their ships. You just click on this, and you click on the ship you want to plunder. But a really safe thing you can do is raid buildings. So if we hit M here, we can see on any water-based map, we have the guild houses, the counting houses rather. They'll occasionally sell specialty goods, like we can see here, at very good prices. So some players that are more savvy might buy things on this market and sell it to whatever market is worth the most and, and make money entirely just on transporting the stuff a little bit in a ship. Is where the pirate haven comes in. We could ransack these places. So I just told our guy there to raid it. And we're gonna speed up a little bit here. So on a fast speed, you'll notice the money noises are constant. That is the most annoying thing for rogues. You can see the progress bar there. If you're playing as a rogue, you're gonna hear these money sound effects constantly. I believe you can turn them on off in the options. If you turn off all sound effects, I could be wrong. But you will get so annoyed with that money sound effect. Because again, you're just nickel and diming your way up to wealth, as you can see there. We're constantly just getting little bits of money. So we're almost done running the place. Almost never does anyone try and stop you. These other boats are just watching. The plundering of a building has ended. 
Uh, and we don't even have upgrades or anything. Um, unfortunately, these ships don't carry much. But uh, then all you do is dispatch and unload. Let's just unload at the Pirate Haven to drop our goods back off. It'll put up to very fast again. Wait for it to come back. And people will buy directly from the sales stock of your Pirate Haven every once in a while if it's something they're interested in. And we just put all that in the sales stock. We can put it on our transports and sell it in whatever towns we want uh, whenever we want to. But overall, the Rogue has a lot of kind of simple in idea and not immediate huge money-making buildings, but if you really work with them and you really know what you're doing, you can become pretty insurmountable. I mean, if anything breaks out into a full-out war where they just absolutely What's want that? to kill you, then all you've got an army. I mean, you're the class absolute best at making a proper army. We'll have him rest. He's pretty beaten up. Because you have the Mercenaries Fortress, and you have the Baron's Camp. So you have two combat-high uh, people to use. You can also use your Thieves, although they're not the best in the game at combat. They're still pretty close. High Dexterity, Martial Arts, Skill. You have a standing army if you have a Crime Syndicate, and they all come with their own daggers, whereas you can't say that with other things. I mean, if you work at a bakery, your bakers are coming unarmed and with no combat skill if you need to use them to fight. You're just going off whatever you can hire at your house. So overall, the Rogue is a really, really interesting class, definitely the most unique one, and one that I find really, really fun, if a little bit micromanagey, but you can set it up in a certain build where it's all based around taverns everywhere and pickpockets everywhere, where it's completely hands-off, where you just, you have your people set up to do the same thing every day, and you could walk away from your computer if you want and get rich eventually. Of course, the AI might catch wise if you're in a smaller map. If you're in a one-city map, the AI will really be fighting you and you'll need to be more careful. Or if you're playing with other human players, they'll probably catch wise to what you're doing and try and put a stop to it. But overall, Rogue, by far the most unique class and one that I find the most interesting. Next episode, which is coming out tomorrow, I'll be going over the patron, who also has a ton of businesses, so I'll be loading up a special save file that have all of those, because it's not very quick to get, but I will be going over a good opener with them. For anyone who needs a recap, good opener on Rogue. I recommend Vagabond's Camp first, because begging is easy experience, and um, you can very easily make very high-value things to sell for dirt cheap. All you need to do is buy wool, and you can find sticks, and that's all you really need. Or start with a tavern if you want a ridiculous amount of experience points, although it will take a little while before you can get the money to then purchase more businesses. Next episode, Patron. If you want to watch uh, more of these tutorial videos on the Guild 2, there's a link in the description, as well as a link in the description to an old stream through I did of this game. I'll probably come back to it at some point. And hey, the Guild 3 is actually in the making, and I might be on the PR list for it. I'm actually not sure, uh, despite me being the top result on all of YouTube for this game. Uh, they weren't very clear with me when I asked them if I was on their PR release list, but they're busy people. Until next time, have a nice day.